You wanna fight? You wanna fight? Damn, he's mad. Nah, I wanna. You wanna fight in the gym, huh? We ain't gotta fight. I don't wanna fight. Yeah, I ain't coming to fight. I came in to cook y'all. This is Kevin Coutte. The man better known as Uncle Scoob first caught my attention after winning a $10,000 one-on-one tournament hosted by Tracy McGrady. He had a pretty amazing journey to get to this point. After graduating high school in 2012, Scoob went on to play basketball at four different colleges, competing at the D2 level. He has since created a league called Street Stars to help promote underground basketball talent in his community. His impressive resume has prompted me to scout the strengths and weaknesses in his one-on-one -on -one game. If you pay attention, you could avoid ending up like this guy. Alright, before I get into Scoob's game, I gotta talk about his channel real quick. I don't know who his cameraman is, but this man needs to be fired. Why is the footage so shaky? I get a headache trying to watch some of his old games. If Scoob watches this, please tell your boy to keep the camera steady and to get the whole court in a shot. It would make your videos a thousand times more enjoyable. Alright, with that out of the way, let's move on to Scoob's strengths. Unlike a lot of the guys I've scouted so far, Scoob's game does not revolve around his handle. He has some flashy moments, but most of his buckets are pretty simple. His go-to move is a step back jumper which he likes to take going left. The move allows him to create space and get his shot off in most situations, as defenders have to respect the potential drive. He's comfortable shooting the step back from the mid-range and the three, and he can shoot it off one foot or off two. I suspect that he honed in on his step back after playing so many games in the trenches. When the crowd is practically standing on the court and you're getting hacked on every drive, you're pretty much forced to create space while relying on your jumper. And for Scoob, his jumper is elite. He shot a blistering 44% from 3 in his D2 career, and his shooting ability really shines in ones. He only needs a small amount of space to get his shot up, as his shot release is extremely fast. Watch as Ty Glover puts his hand down only for a second, but that's more than enough time for Scoob to get his shot off. It takes a lot of energy to constantly pressure the ball all game, so he tends to get a lot more open looks late in games. And even against good defense, he's comfortable taking and making difficult shots off the dribble. You can't give Scoob any space if you want a chance at winning. His final strength would be his defensive energy. Scoob almost never takes a possession off on defense. I've seen some people say he fouls a lot, which is true, but when there's a ref involved, he does have the ability to defend without fouling. He moves his feet well on the perimeter and does a good job of blocking off angles to the rim. He's a pretty physical defender, and he's able to absorb the bump on drives and still contest in the paint. And even when he does get beat off the dribble, he's athletic enough to recover at the rim. What's most impressive about Scoob's defense is his ability to guard guys much bigger than him. This is partially due to him being strong as shit, but it's also just due to him being up for the challenge of playing whoever's in front of him. Hey, you're the, you're the first guard who hasn't when we asked you to play in this, you didn't ask what I'm playing against. You yeah. didn't ask how tall they were. You're like, I'm down. And oh, yeah. you, haven't you haven't made a big deal about, you know, yeah. the guys being taller than you, bigger than you. Yeah, it's not that, that serious. You know what I'm saying? They got, they bleed the same way I bleed. They got a guard the same way I got a guard. So, you know, I was brought up to adjust, man. We adapt to anything, so, you know what I mean? Moving on to weaknesses. As mentioned earlier, Scoob takes and makes a lot of tough shots. 
However, this does tend to hurt him against tougher competition who are able to get more easy buckets off of layups in the paint. This imbalance in shot selection is partially driven by Scoob's finishing ability. He is prone to miss a lot of layups in the paint using both his left and right hand. Now this is somewhat due to the fact that he plays guys much taller than him to begin with, but the fact remains that Scoob has much more trouble scoring in the paint than guys like Nas, Frigga, and even Hezzy God. If I was guarding him, I'd try to force him to put the ball on the floor with the hope of him missing a contested lay. Overall, I have Scoob on my all YouTube first team on the same tier as Frigga and Moon. Scoob is battle tested and has matched up and played well against some of the best players on the platform. He plays strong and disciplined on both sides of the ball and it's difficult to get Scoob to play outside of his game. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well what about that time Rob skunked him? But everyone has off games and I don't think it's fair to hold one performance against him. Still, let me know what you think about his ranking and comment below who I should scout next.